mind blown. There are some coincidences that just seem too mind blowing to be accident. Two key founders of the United States of America, and who were friends despite political differences, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, died hours apart on the same day, July 4, 1826, the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of American Independence. Furthermore, just before Jefferson's death, he uttered, at least Adams still lives. In 1863, less than a year before John Wilkes Booth killed Abraham Lincoln, Booth's brother Edwin saved the life of Lincoln's eldest son, Robert. At the Jersey City train station, Robert was accidentally pushed off the train station platform and into the space between the platform and the train as the train began to move. Edwin grabbed him by his coat collar and pulled him up before he fell further into the moving train. The U.S. Civil War began in Wilmer McLean's front yard at his home in Manassas, Virginia on July 21, 1861. Wanting to move away from the war and destruction, he moved far south to Appomattox, Virginia. As the Union Army began closing in around Richmond, General Lee led his troops west in an attempt to escape. On April 9, 1865, however, beaten and worn, Lee surrendered his army to General Grant. This occurred in Appomattox, in the parlor of Wilmer McLean's house. Samuel Longhorn Clemens, better known as Mark Twain, was born on November 30, 1835, in Florida, Missouri, the day that Halley's Comet appeared from behind the sun. The comet appears only once every 75 to 80 years. Twain died on April 21, 1910, the day after Halley's Comet emerged from the far side of the sun. The chances of being struck by lightning is one in a million. Major Walter Summerford, however, was struck in 1918 while riding a horse, in 1924 while fishing, and in 1930 while walking in the park, three different times throughout his life. He died in 1932, and then, in 1936, his gravestone in Vancouver was struck again. That is four times every six years. Seriously, what did he do to Mother Nature? Morgan Robertson wrote a book called Futility in 1898 about a supposedly unsinkable ocean liner that hits an iceberg on an April night and sinks. The story is called The Wreck of the Titan. Fourteen years later, the great ocean liner Titanic, which was called unsinkable, sinks on the night of April 14, 1912, after hitting an iceberg. Zhu Weifang lived in the Jiangsu province of China. In the late 1980s, he jumped into a river near his house to save a man who was in danger of drowning. Zhu and his wife continued living by the river. In 2018, Zhu heard someone calling for help. An eight-year-old boy who couldn't swim had fallen into the river. Zhu and his wife were able to pull the boy out of the river. They soon learned that this boy was the son of the man Zhu had saved 30 years ago. I think he needs to be on their Christmas card list for good. The moon's diameter is 2,159.2 miles. The sun's is 864,000 miles in diameter, almost exactly 400 times bigger. By a coincidence, the moon is about 232,000 miles from the Earth, and the sun is 93 million miles from Earth, almost exactly 400 times further away. So, from an observer's perspective, the size and distance cancel each other out and appear the same size to us in the sky. It is also this combination of coincidences that allow us to see only the corona of the sun perfectly during the solar eclipse. What are the chances of this? Stephen Hawking, arguably one of the greatest scientific minds to have ever lived, shares his birth and death dates with two of the other greatest minds of all time, Galileo and Einstein. He was born on the 300th anniversary of Galileo's death and died on what would have been Einstein's 139th birthday. Violet Jessup was the survivor of three of Britain's worst ocean-going disasters. Jessup was an Argentine stewardess and nurse who worked for White Star Liners. In 1911, she started working as a stewardess on the RMS Olympic, the largest civilian liner at the time. The Olympic was embroiled in tragedy when she was leaving port in Southampton and struck the British warship HMS Hawk. 
The collision left both ships badly damaged, but got off lucky with no fatalities. After this near miss, Jessup received a new posting as a stewardess aboard the Titanic on April 10, 1912. Four days later, it sank, and she was one of the lucky few that got to a lifeboat. In 1916, she worked for the British Red Cross as a stewardess aboard the HMHS Britannic. On November 21, 1916, that ship hit a mine or was torpedoed in the Aegean Sea, whereupon it sank in 55 minutes. She barely survived after having to jump from a lifeboat that hit the propellers of the sinking ship. She went on to live a full life of 83 years. If it had been me, I would have acquainted myself well with trains after that. Mind blown. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to have your mind blown daily. It's free, you know.